everyone and welcome to this Lumen Twin Soul topic once again. This is a continuation video from my previous topic about true source mirroring within our Twin Soul consciousness. I want to talk about some of the distractions that are born out of separation that sometimes still present a challenging barrier towards what is truly an experience, an embodiment of the ultimate truth of divine love. So as you know, as humans, we often have these preferences and tendencies, and we often think this is um, either a part of our character, a part of our nature, something that we believe about ourselves. And the more we move deeper into what we call divine love, state of this deep cosmic union, the more these preferences of what we like, what we don't like, are simply falling away, they're dissolving, and this is what I call a state of divine neutrality. So only in the state of divine neutrality can we truly witness ourselves as a reflector to all of life, and this is what I've talked about in the previous video. In this video, I want to go deeper into certain trapments that we don't always recognize. Uh, the way we filter love, I want to talk about how we still filter love. So when we connect to everything at the essence level, this is when we're truly expressing what we call the twin soul consciousness. The twin soul consciousness at its purest form exists as an essence level. So our mission as everyone who calls themselves a twin flame nowadays in the spiritual community um, is often misinterpreted. So it's always about loving a certain person who is your twin flame, your match, your counterpart and not really seeing the bigger picture that this is actually a level of consciousness. So it's a consciousness of this full expression of divine love at its finest. And what this means is that in this divine state of neutrality, you truly are this expression of love. You don't just love this person for they are your counterpart or they do reflect your preferences. And sometimes the counterbalances that you require for your own path that somehow balance you out even more. Our path extends beyond that. Our, our path as divine lovers, you know, the path of being a divine lover, I've talked about that so many times in my videos, is much wider. It's much more expansive than just that. So with us to truly be aligned with that path, we have to start calling ourselves out on every aspect that we don't really see. It's not born of divine love. So what really triggered this uh, video response was a conversation I had with a friend today. And we were talking about something in our preferences. And it was something about movies and an actors or, you know, things we like or don't like. And this, again, I'm just using this as a trigger for that state of how we can go deeper in our consciousness. This is in no way a judgment or anything like that. So these triggers often come to show us are we moving forward in the way we see life or we're staying fixed with the reality we think we have it all figured out? And in the spiritual communities, you will often meet people that they think they have it all figured out. <laughs> and it's, it's a common case. And we've all done that. We've all been there, perhaps, maybe. Um, this is nothing, again, uh, to judge. This is something to notice in our state and how we've been programmed into a s separation, uh, you know, constant... Uh, accessing of reality which is filtering it's not true source mirroring okay so my friend was saying well I don't like these types of actors or I don't fall for these things and then I really tuned into but but is it really about falling for something or liking something or these preferences and I've noticed so many times uh, the sages or the mystics are saying have no preferences just fall in love with all life just love all because with preferences you always get filters and you get disappointed and, and you're not open to the full expression of love in union so when we have preferences we often negate certain aspects of life and we say no no it's okay that exists but it's, it's just not for me many times it will be like a it will be like a program that runs behind us and many times it's not even coming from us from our true core many times it's societal many times it's coming from the beliefs of our patterns uh, through our parents or ancestors uh, the lineages we were born into the countries we were born into the beliefs or religions even we were born to and many times we think well that's a part of me and my personality but an illumined personality in truth 
it's, it's that dissolved personality when personality is not even what we would reference as personality per se but it's that state of being and i've talked about the flame of illumination many times before where everything you access is love <laughs> even you might not like things we're all still people we might not like when people behave in a disrespectful manner towards other people and forms of life or animals and nature in general we may not like that uh, you know we're not liking what we're seeing in this immense density and expression sometimes coming from born of that separation but in no way we are to judge it that's the difference okay it's not about whether we like something or not it's that step forward when we don't realize that maybe we're partially holding judgment against that so we're still in that separation so many times you will see people that say they have really strong intuitive abilities and psychic abilities especially those that call themselves a twin flame and these people will often say well i'm so well balanced and i'm so intuitive and i always see people how they are you know i see their energy i read their energy field and that's true we can all read other people's energy field sometimes we are aware of it sometimes we're not but this what i'm talking about is not related with that it's the judgment that follows after that sometimes we're passing on and we're sometimes passing it on as that's the truth in this moment but as much as we can read energy let's say of a situation a person something that we're feeling that which is not coming from the pure source mirroring program of, of the pure twin soul consciousness which i've talked about before um, is going to be filtered through a perception and many times it will be hidden we think that's my conception it's it's i'm always right because i see people i know how they are i see it in this moment and even with this example i had oh, there's a brown butterfly sitting on my backpack <laughs> see because it's there it's like, so cute hey oh i'm so sorry you can't see it this is so cute so i have an audience though besides all of you I'm kind of nervous now who butterfly <laughs> come on <laughs> i get shy so anyway what, what i'm saying is the moment we pass on a judgment call like this and we say well this uh, i'm intuitive so i tune into that person's field and i'm seeing this and that when we just feel into the frequency and we feel well you know this kind of frequency they currently resonate in terms of the energy field anything else we pass on as they are like this you know the you know i had this example with a friend about someone and it was like they're like this they're like this we talked about something and again i felt like this mm. <laughs> you know we often do that but why are we doing it because in no way we have the right to pass a judgment call on someone even when we say it's not judgment it's discernment but is it really many times we will say well it's discernment because i'm seeing clearly because i'm so intuitive so i can see into the energy of what someone is currently embodying but the difference when you are at the essence level expression is you no longer have even an interest to describe someone or tune into their energy field or how they are all you feel into is the, the true core essence whatever what they embody in the moment is just the experience so we don't always as humans have the eyesight or the vision of clarity of what why they are the way why do they wear masks uh, why do they have these filters and truth it's none of our business unless that person is called to work with us and they come for assistance you know by their own soul accord however we have to really be watchful what i mean by that is be mindful of whenever we say oh i'm calling out on this person they're like this and that at the same moment when we do that it's only fair that we also call on ourselves out because there's aspects within us and like i've said this is no judgment call this is for all of us we've all been a part of this behavior because it's so deeply rooted in our society because a lot of times we think self-righteousness you know i know this because i'm so wise and so intuitive and i'm an ancient being in any way if you're truly an ancient we don't really pass on these judgments so we have to call on ourselves when we're playing out these programs and truly realize that's not really what twin soul consciousness is twin soul consciousness is a state that is held and sustained within the essence level which means you as is a being who is awakened to your own flame of illumination or illumined truth you no longer have the desire to put attributes or you know kind of like taglines on people and uh, well what's how they are now maybe i'm not talking about them being like this forever but this is how they are now but it's still calling out on someone it's still describing them so 
at the same moment, what we also do, you know, replacing judgment for discernment and vice versa, <laughs> uh, what we also do at that moment is we don't realize the power that we hold with our consciousness. As you know, it was proven at the level of the water molecules that, you know, the structure of the sacred geometry held within it, that the moment you held certain observation, uh, how you observe it the consciousness of it is already expanding and changing so when you pass on a call like you're calling out on someone being a certain way and you're saying oh because i have this bs detector i don't know everything we've all been like that sometimes especially when we're much younger i know there's many people who are now uh, star beings star seeds they're very young they have lots of this intuitive abilities, but they're not yet embodying mastery. So that's the difference. Mastery is not something that's a given, it's earned, which means with each stepping stone, you have to go higher in calling your own self out because by calling out on someone how they are, it's the purest mirror how you can also see. But what, it, what in me is still filtering reality in this way that is actually basically an inception that is kind of like a virus spreading through uh, our earth field because so much was indoctrinated and pulled into the strings of life that is truly not <laughs> this divine love, uh, the only truth of love within us, which like I said, we still have preferences, but these preferences are held by you don't want to participate in negativity. You don't want to participate in something that you say, oh, it's, it's a mask. But we, with this conversation today, there was a word that was mentioned, which was something being fake. And again, in the past, I wouldn't be so attentive to that, but I've, I've grew a lot, you know, in my own experience. So like I said, you can have a lot of knowledge but on earth, you still have to go through years. You have to go through ages. <laughs> you have to mature like fine wine. Like you have to have experience, not just awareness of it. And I meet a lot of people who at a very first level, they will say, well, I don't have to tune into these relationships or I don't have to have these experiences. I just know what I know. But, you know, again, there's this inception, a little bit of inception here because knowing something inside and actually having an experience with it it's a different thing because when you have a literal experience, it, it changes your cellular memory. So you're repatterning yourself this way. You are allowing the experience of life to show you. So one thing is to have an actual experience with someone. The other is to just view a person or a situation and say, this is how it is. Especially what we do, as you know, humans like to pass on a judgment without even trying something. You know, I'm not talking about whether <laughs> if you're a vegan, you don't want to try meat. Of course you don't. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about the things that are somehow presented on our path to expand us but we don't want to see we're like no you know i already know it i already know everything and this is like playing the boss this is like playing the the, the, the know-it-all <laughs> what's it called the smarty pants version the role and many times um especially beings who feel they're very wise on this planet that have a certain position in terms of i've been here before I'm, i've done lots of work on the planet i know what i know and like I said, we've all been there and done that, but there is a higher level of expansion when you step into that. I know S, da, 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 which means I know <laughs> censorship. I know zero. Um, everything has an essence. Sometimes even what we call is fake. This is fake. I don't like that. I read it as fake because I'm intuitive. I want us to take a deeper look into that statement because calling something fake is almost like saying, hmm, it's not of source, okay? Or a certain mask or coating around it is of source. But even though, even if the surface level is what we reference as fake, there is a genuine depth held within it. And if we truly are beings of divine love, we're here to assist, right? We're here to rise the frequency in everyone because twin soul consciousness, those who call themselves twin souls or twin soul couples, um, coupledom <laughs> expression of that union, they have a mission to see everything through their own source reflection. So if they see themselves in that state of pure, genuine truth, you have to call that out in others, not call them out on their mistakes and falsehoods and fake what we reference as such. We have to start calling out the higher aspects of life within everything because everything at its core has an essence. So when you really vibrate with the essence level, you align with that, you're also going to see all the distortions that are playing out and you don't want to participate in that which is not of the essence level in relating experiences, in conversations, in communion, whatever it is. Okay, so we have to be 
willing to be a sovereign so we call out each other out on these aspects so we can say look maybe that's okay and it worked for us at a certain level so a lot of beings who are starborn they've held like this shield of protection which meant from this space of my protection i can give judgments of others what we reference as discernment so that i stay safe because this is this density this is this frequency and it doesn't serve me i stay in my own space so from the sacred space i can pass on these discernments or judgments whatever you can call them but the truth is when you never had an experience with that <laughs> other counterpart of life uh, let's say you didn't have a conversation with a person you didn't have you know it's maybe someone says look what do you think about that person you we're just used to passing on our own opinions but in truth that's not true twin soul consciousness so if you reference yourself as a twin um, you have to start functioning at that level <laughs> that's that's the basic teaching so many people are saying why am I not together with the twin or with the counterpart well you first have to function at the level which what that counterpart means on the earth level of experience this is what it means it means you as a pure source reflector of divine love to all life without these preferences so to truly step into this divine neutrality and fall in love with all life even if let's say I'm looking at people and I'm looking at movies and I say this is not my thing to watch or this is not my type if I already have a decision in my mind these are the type of movies I never watch or this is something I would never look at or this is the kind of type of person I would never you know people say date or <laughs> allow in my life what if I am not allowing something that would give me a new boost of expansion and it would bring something to me and to that counterpart in that moment, bring a certain aspect of that expansion in this moment. So we often do that because we're so used to separation that we can't even call it a call out when it's happening. We think we're always in union. We're not always in union, especially when we're passing on such calls. Um, so the word fake why are we using it why are we saying "Ugh, this person is fake or that situation is fake i don't want to tune into that because it's fake it's truly limiting us to the potential of becoming a divine lover you know seeing all life is juicy <laughs> we don't have to dance with every aspect of life we don't have to go if something is not our call you know something is not truly pulling us uh, if that magnetic <laughs> pull is not there but I'm saying is let us not pretend we have all the answers that we're so intuitive that we can pass on these calls. And when we do, let us also call on our own selves. Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we passing on these opinions and these references, right? Uh, because if we truly are lovers of life, divine lovers, which I talk about so often because I myself am a divine lover of life, I'm choosing to expand. I am choosing to open my heart to a greater depth of love than what my mind can imagine possible or what my mind has already in store uh, because the mind has been trained <laughs> totally differently okay so this means that we can assist if, if you are truly seeing the essence of something or someone you're helping it to come and or to rise to that level when you're saying well they're like this temporarily what you're failing to see is that you're holding that temporarily in this moment because healing or whatever it can only happen in this moment so you're saying well they're like this now maybe not later i'm not passing a call on them forever but because forever is only in the now and you're making that judgment call in the now this is what we're doing so you're actually keeping the thing at that vibration so when you see everything as as pure everything at its frequency uh, when you allow the chance for everything to present itself in this moment and have an impression that's momentarily happening through the experience whatever it is without needing to make that call without calling things fake <laughs> without saying i don't like this because and already making a choice in advance um you know we were talking with this friend and she said to me i don't like to watch movies so much with actors right just cartoons because da, 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 i don't know and i'm thinking hmm you know why do we say these things why do we have these preferences there's something within us that thinks no i'm only in line with this but then again we can't express ourselves multidimensionally we can't experience life you know as it wants to offer itself to us so maybe we have more of a rooted way the way messages come through specifically for us but know this for sure that source always speaks and i know because i'm always in nature how it speaks to me mostly in nature but it speaks to me in other languages as well so if i don't go to nature let's say a week if there's bad weather i have no source speaking or communion and i feel like 
I feel like withdrawn and blocked all of a sudden? No. Source always communicates. It's always communing in everything. And it's always going to be something different. So if we kind of pass this judgment call, we can't exist at that level. We can't vibrate this high that we can when we truly embrace this illumination state. Um, and we can just... You know, for me, I truly know what it means to be a lover of life. I, I, I'm in love with everything, even though I have preferences. But these are like different preferences towards than I would have limitations. They're not like limited preferences. They're more like, you know, I'm not going to go towards the places with cr crowds of people because that's just my nature. I like to be in pure spaces. But I'm not like, <laughs> I'm bothered when it's too crowded or too noisy, you know, and people who do things that don't respect nature but it doesn't mean that people themselves bother me like I don't like people or I hate people even or whatever it just means that I, I'm, I'm choosing to go with the flow of what is my highest reality without passing a judgment that you know would, would say people are always like this people are always like this look at that you know we've again even I have done that in the past and maybe still do sometimes but I have to call myself out each time when this program you know kind of says hello <laughs> and I have to say hello back and say uh, 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 you're not gonna do it this time I'm transcribing you all over again <laughs> I'm doing a total rewrite so this is why I'm sharing this because it's so important so all those people who call themselves twins <laughs> realize that this is not about I'm, I'm coming together with a person that I call my twin and that's it no <laughs> no that's not what this union means uh, this union is a complete state of total acceptance of life falling in love with life and then co-creating with life at the level of the essence so i hope this makes sense i hope that everyone can benefit from a little bit of um <laughs> what do you call it the uh, benefit of a doubt um, because so many times we think no we have it all figured out i never do this you know it's, it's the ego speaking that way we have to be willing to see everything, you know, and every response we have. And I also had to look clearly and see when wasn't I fully a lover of life? Or when someone passed a comment or a judgment that maybe wasn't aligned with me, but I just followed because I felt maybe they see more than I do about that situation or person. So I just followed along. I wasn't authentic. I wasn't really connecting with the mirror, right? The mirror is always my core, that core, which I am... Um, feeling into or tuning into whatever it is it's always a mirror and in, in everything there's always a mirror consciousness it's how again I described that in the previous video its source is flowing in life through that first mirroring consciousness expression it's the basic program of all he humanoid not humanoid um, animated life okay so um, we always put these intermediaries in between because we don't trust ourselves. So you have people who say, I like this person, but I want to ask my best friend about them and what do they feel? <laughs> people always do that. And it's funny because it's a part of you that doesn't trust your feeling and your expression and your experience. So when that person is connecting with that, they're doing it from where they are, their own space of integration. They're not doing it from where you are and the experience you might necessarily uh, or needing to have in this moment. They're not there. <laughs> Maybe that's not even important for them. Maybe there's somewhere uh, totally different that uh, calls them out. So we have to first tr start trusting ourselves, our own experiences. We have to feel through our own experiences without always needing that external verification point. We have to return to what is truly important. So if something doesn't make sense for us, we can still ask ourselves, is this important for my path or not? And then that, gain that clarity through seeing everything at the essence level to give everything an opportunity to be what it is without us saying, hmm, hmm, hmm this is fake. This person is fake. <laughs> we always say that that's a fake person. Why do we say that? Truly, why do we say that? No one is fake. They might have... An aspect of them that's not a line uh, <laughs> but if it's not truly something we can pass a judgment on we don't have the right it's not really divine service and it's programs that we need to uncover because people who say we're light workers we're star seeds well then do your work that's your work it's to bring a state of illumination to this planet to see differently because the rest of the world is already functioning like that so if we're we're not the ones who are calling out these false programs and rewriting them then who will do that you know that's a part of our mastery again mastery is not 
it's like self-obvious. You just download light codes and you're mastering yourself through that. No, it's not a given. It's through each initiation you're passing a new uh, gateway and it's earned through your wisdom that's expressed in experience. Okay, so the last thing I want to mention also is you know, many yogis or masters always talk about relationship when you ask them. They always talk about relationship, like why is it even needed? You only, your only relationship is with source, da 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 da. All, it's always the same answer. But why are they saying that? Primarily because their mission is to teach people about the nature of, of um, non-attachment, you know? Uh, because most of the relationships on this functional 3D level are karmic in terms of codependency, attachment, addiction, or even marriages. They talk about marriages. What's the meaning of marriage? You know, why does it even exist? But what they don't present, what these teachers or sages or mystics don't present is the other version that galactic mystics <laughs> or shamans have as a knowing is that there is a higher mirroring um, that also is a part of the earth experience at the very sacred level, which is this divine union or what I call the hero's gamas. And why is it important? So they actually teach the masses and the masses, you know, the majority of them where they are. So they kind of need this understanding that marriage is, is, is like a program until you see it like this, you know, until it's like this in the system and I'm with this person. So I need to be this way, behave that way, make compromises. And that's why they teach these things in such a way. But they never talk about the higher aspect, which is what is possible once you do let go of that, once you open yourself to higher possibility. And why is there such an importance of this divine union is because, again, just like source in its primary program of mirroring is an internal program in creation. It expresses itself always in two, always like two, a couple. We, we recently did this spirit channeling and it said there's always a two. Um, everything is like, you know, even when you look at the nature animals, they're always coupling up. And a lot of them also have these unions when they're mating for life, you know. And I see butterflies, they're always making like... Uh, butterflies, when you look at them, they're always flying like this. They're creating waves and spirals of... It's like DNA. So they're not just flying and having their own experience. It might look like that. But when you tune into nature, they're doing so much more. They're opening energies. They're weaving. They're moving energy. So we can't move energy when our consciousness is stuck with, with the idea of like, oh my only way of being is like this or like that okay so the higher nature of this coupledom of, of coming together with the other with counterparts in the physical is that it increases divine potentiality for life for co-creation in the physical sense so just like you can create on your own and that's beautiful and perfect with coming together with another aspect of life you can create things that by yourself you can't and i remember years back i was reading this channel to story history of i don't know earth and this universe and in it there was this example of what was referenced as the, of the mother father god yeah and it said well the mother in itself could be self-birthing all this life and creation but there was a choice to do it through love with the aspect that we would say oh that's the, the uh, divine masculine or divine father yes and the choice was because of love because there was such a massive infusion of love when there was this uh, polarization occurring and that's why it was so so we we all can self-birth you know even in certain animal species you have um, uh, self-reproduction so self-generated birth uh, we can also uh, as humans experience much of that uh, because we're birthing through our internal union and that's the first stage but why they don't mention so much this is because, again, maybe it's not their mission. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean now they say your only relationship that will ever be is with source. Okay, that's vertical. <laughs> that's, again, vertical. But you are in life now. You're in creation. You are a co-creator with life, which means to be a divine lover of life, you do witness and experience a component of what we call coupledom this polarity that it's kind of like a natural law of polarities is there's always a merge there's a pull because the moment you do like this if you really spread it out like this you will see ah your fingers want to pull back together because it's kind of like ah you put them so far apart they want to come back together and join so it's for the purpose of a new creation which again comes up as divine triangulation and it brings such a potency that it's a different potency than what we can experience only with our own source. Uh, 
uh, mirroring, <laughs> the internal mirroring. So these gurus usually never have uh, relationships or husbands, wives, whatever. Or they talk about it like almost like making pe- feel, making people feel like, you know, when you're in a traditional marriage or in a traditional way of living, you can never be a guru because you're in a relationship. <laughs> it's sometimes I have this feeling of what the heck is this? You know, um, it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with that. That's just a choice. But there is a higher experience because it relates to this divine, sacred, orgasmic um, sexuality, which is a creation of life at higher levels. And you can only understand that and not teach, but embody that when you yourself as a being, as a luminary being, uh, become a part of that when you embody that. And you can then pass that message onward. Um, So many times it's not seen. So you have this immense duality now in the world when these sages are all saying you know it's only you and your source that's all that ever matters and then the twin flame communities are all obsessed about you need to find this this one the one so where is this balancing point i'm asking you you have to find it in yourself you have to feel what is your current path what is your current theme of understanding and be ready to keep on expanding within each Uh, variable that presents itself to you in the moment you know maybe it's in the moment don't make a judgment you know like this is it and this is where i am and i can't go higher Um, you always can go higher because it's all always expanding it's all always evolving there is always evolution in life so um yeah i hope this assisted some of you in going deeper into what divine love truly is so that you can embody it as a perfect already beautifully perfect example of that uniqueness of source but to also remember there's an aspect that we call creation. And creation has this pull. It's this magnetic and electric pull of life. that are. It's like a natural pull together. It's always this pull for togetherness. Earth has a deeply um, rooted experience of togetherness. Because it is a planet of relationship. And I've shared this before. This is a planetary template where relating experiences are of the utmost importance and that's why relationships are always probably when people who want readings or (laughs) psychic predictions they're always asking first Uh, they're asking about life career or mission and then relationship is the second or the first thing because it's somehow deeply in our consciousness it's understood that it's really important and we relate on different levels you know the way we have integrated our soul and our ensoulment process and yet still for us for all of us at different levels it will be important but it is important because of that reason of creation and life expanding through love the component of love so as much as i become self-sustainable sufficient self-sufficient resourceful whatever there is still not the same component of love that plays out when the coupledom, let's say, comes together. That's all I'm saying. So, but it has to be in the right illumined way when both are unique, uh, totally sovereign individuals whole within themselves already, which I've talked about before so many times. We don't want to repeat that again. (laughs) So I'm wishing you as always so many beautiful blessings of divine love, wisdom, and power. I'll talk to you when I do next time. Stay beautiful and radiant as always and always go deeper. You know that. That's our assignment. Take care. Bye.